Hey everybody, welcome back to Brutal Doom. I am your host, Willie B. Coyote, and in the last video I ranted about soulless Disney remakes as I got closer to finishing episode 3. As for today's video, we are finally going to be finishing episode 3 of Brutal Doom and bring my very first Let's Play series to a close. As always, let's get the self-promotion done right out of the gate. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow and hopefully get paid as well. So without further ado, here we go. Um... You know, uh, I was debating whether or not I was going to, uh, continue the Let's Play series into Episode 4 of Doom, but, and in the, uh, basically before, for every video I've done, uh, basic, I basically do a dress rehearsal pretty much where I play the given area ahead of time, and, uh, so I can gauge how long the video is going to be, and also I know, like, what I'm so I remember what to do so I don't look like a noob, basically. And, uh... So, uh... During the... Basically, the dress rehearsal for, uh... Episode 4... I was, uh... Like the noob I am, I was just having such a hard time getting past the, uh... First two levels of Episode 4... Or... In Brutal Doom, so, uh... I've kind of decided against that. I might come back and do it later on, but, uh... Uh, for now, like, this is probably gonna be the last video of this series. So, in here... Kill the pinky demons. Gotta love the chain gun. The wheel pulse rifles. Um, what was else was I going to talk about? Sorry for the dead air there. Uh, uh yeah, I was also, uh, thinking about what I was going to talk about in this video, and I decided to talk about how ridiculously overpriced that ticket prices are getting nowadays for concerts. Um, like, I was on Ticketmaster the other day, and I saw, uh, Blink-182 tickets are going for as high as 150 to as to $300 per seat. And that's just for the ordinary, like, ground level and nosebleed seats. Like, like, no, that's just for the nosebleed seats. Like, like, it's even more expensive for the ground level seats. Like, right in front of the stage. Like, how? Like, and it all comes back to the fact that Ticketmaster has just been basically monopolizing ticket prices over the last few years. And it really stinks as well. Like, uh, like, I'll tell you who definitely doesn't have a problem with it though, Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine are just such massive grifters when it comes to this sort of thing. Like, they'll all talk about how long, like, oh, everything's too expensive and workers' rights and consumer rights and all that, but they're... Perfect. I guarantee you, they are perfectly okay with charging three hundred plus dollars for tickets to their reunion tour that they're not even making new music for. Like, seriously, Rage Against the Machine are basically made the blueprint for political grifting in the modern era. Like, these guys are supposed anti-capitalist revolutionaries, while they go out of their way to live exorbitant, extravagant capitalist lifestyles everywhere they go. Like, I remember hearing this story once about uh, someone who saw Zach De La Rocha, who's the front man of Rage Against the Machine, leaving a restaurant and getting into a chauffeur-driven, chauffeur-driven Cadillac Escalade. Like, dude, you're supposed to be a revolutionary who's fighting for the working man? No, you're not. 
You're a rock star. You're a millionaire rock star. Just be honest about it. And, like, Tom Morello is even more egregious than that. Tom Morello, for those who don't know, is the guitar player for Rage Against the Machine. And uh, he uh, was at a restaurant in, like, Seattle or somewhere. I think it was either for a solo show or an audio slave show that he was at. And uh, he uh, was... Uh, going to this restaurant, he'd heard good things about this restaurant, wanted to get some food, it was after the show, he was with some of his friends, and uh, he, they decided to go get some food. Only problem was, the restaurant was filled to capacity. The bouncer at the door told him that they were filled to capacity, and he would have, unless he had a reservation, he would have to wait his turn. Tom Morello, however, being Tom Morello, decided to flex the, oh, I'm, I'm the guy from Rage Against the Machine, you know, so don't you think you can squeeze me in? The bouncer said no. Naturally, because, you know, we're filled to capacity. You know, we're filled to capacity. There's nothing we could do. Uh, Tom Morello, however, just kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until finally the bouncer just got fed up with him and asked him to leave. Tom Morello didn't take too kindly to this and promptly went on Facebook to act like a Karen about it, pretty much. And, uh... And uh, he talked about how, oh, like, the, this person is anti-workers' rights because they wouldn't let me have a, a seat at their restaurant. At which point, the owner of the restaurant came on and described and told what happened in the incident from his own perspective and the perspective of the bouncer at the door and said, that's not what happened. You were just being a jerk. You were just being a stuck-up rock star jerk. Because at the end of the day, you know, Rage Against the Machine, they can spout off about workers' rights and revolution and all they want, but at the end of the day, they're still rock stars, they're still making money, they're still living capitalist lifestyles. They claim to be fighting against the system while they actively reinforce it with making money. And this is coming from someone who is a capitalist, like, come on. Like, if you want to use your music and your art as a platform to uh, kind of like spread your message basically and get your message out there and try to change the world for the better, there is nothing wrong with that at all. Po power to you, man. But don't go pretending like you're LARPing basically, like you're some kind of anti-capitalist revolutionary while you're acting like just a famous rock star jerkwad every opportunity you're given. Where's the gate here? In this level, I always get lose track of where the the exit gate is. It's somewhere on the edge here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, here it is. Come back in here. Open that. Open that. And boosh! Level complete. Mount Erebus. Now entering the gate to Limbo. Okay, boom, boom. Shuck and rain. Okay, this way. So we can find the blue key. Like, so, that's the big problem with Rage Against the Machine. They're just massive grifters in every sense of the word. Um, another good example of a band that I have qualms with over the fact that they don't practice what they preach is Green Day. Now, I've got a love-hate relationship with Green Day. I love their music. You know, I grew up with their music, you know. I was in kindergarten when American Idiot came out. And, you know, my sister was a huge fan of Green Day back then. Go away! <laughs> As I was saying... Um, so, I grew up with Green Day, uh, you know, I was in kindergarten when, uh, American Idiot came out, and my sister was a huge fan of Green Day. And, uh, so, like, every time Green Day came on, and she, that was the same year that she'd gotten her driver's license, at least I think it was, anyway. It was around the same time she'd gotten her driver's license, so she started picking me up from school, because my parents were really busy. 
and uh, and because of that, the uh, the my sister would always put on the local rock radio station, and uh, and she would especially turn up the music whenever Green Day came on. You know, I must have listened to Boulevard of Broken Dreams like at least 200,000 times when I was a kid. Well, probably not that many, but you get the gist. It was many, many times. And so fast forward when I was in eighth grade and I started really getting into music myself. And uh, and uh, one of the bands I started listening to was, of course, Green Day. And uh, so I love Green Day. But, you know, I started paying attention to, like, Green Day's antics about, like, the, not so much antics about, like, where the circumstances in which, uh, w which American Idiot arose. Arose? Arose. <laughs> I can't speak English. Um, arose. And, uh, you know, they talked about how the Iraq war was bad, and, you know, like, they correctly were calling out the Bush administration for the folly of the Iraq war. Nothing wrong with that at all. Fast forward a couple of years, Bush leaves office, so Obama gets elected. Where was Green Day when uh, Bush, no, well, not Bush, when Obama and Biden were doing to Syria and Libya what Bush and Cheney did to Iraq and Afghanistan? Heck, where were they when they were when Obama and Biden were continuing the trend in Afghanistan and Iraq? What Bush and Cheney started? They were nowhere. They were doing literally fuck all. Like, they were just like, I sleep. I sleep. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I sleep. Meanwhile, fast forward a few years, Green Day goes on hiatus for a little bit after the whole iHeartRadio thing where Billy was drunk out of his mind during the iHeartRadio performance and just basically had a diva tantrum in front of everybody. And, uh... Green Day comes back and releases their comeback album with, uh, I forgot what the album was called, shows you how much of a noob I am, uh, but uh, the lead single was Bang Bang, and you know, it seemed like Green Day is back, you know, they're making good music again, and that's going to be really cool, but then, this was around the time when Trump reared his ugly head, and was doing his whole MAGA thing and whatever, and Green Day was just like, like, Oh, yeah, like, we can get hit angry about something again. And they just start going, no Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. Dude, where were you for the last eight years when Bush, when Obama and Biden were doing the same policies that Bush and Cheney did? You know, where were you? You know, and Billy Joe Armstrong has the gall to call himself a, a political independent. You're not independent, dude. You're a Democrat. You are a partisan hack in every sense of the word. You know, if you want to be a partisan hack, that's fine. Just be honest about it. Stop pretending like you're independent when you're not. You're not an independent. You never have been. You're a Democrat. Stop pretending you're anything other than that. Uh, honestly, like, I I love Green Day. I really do. I'm sure they're really cool guys, but, you know, like, come on. Seriously. Get with the program, dude. Like, and it's really annoying to me, because when, especially because whenever they get called out on this, and they do get called out on it, they, uh, they immediately, Billy Joe just immediately lashes out about it. Like, there was this one guy who, uh, said, uh, had something to the effect of, we get it, you don't like Republicans. Can we move on, please? And Billy Joe Armstrong called him a shithead. Like, dude, really? And he was basically just acting like an, a, a petulant child, pretty much. By the way, this is another one of the new Brutal Doom weapons, which is the railgun. Uses the same uh, ammo as the plasma gun, uh, and it uh, really—it's really good for taking out. It's really powerful. And it's really good for taking out enemies at long range.
Okay, let's, here we go. Jump! There we go. And... Gate to Limbo completed. Now for the final boss level. You're gonna wanna make sure you got the BFG 9000 for this one. There we go. Yeah, the hitbox on this, uh, thing is really, really weird. You gotta make sure you aim center mass where the gun is on the spider demon here. Uh, and just get as many shots as you can. If you run out of rounds for the BFG, switch to your rocket launcher. Just make sure you head back here and grab extra rockets before you do that, though. And above all else, just never stop moving. You know, keep mobile. Almost got it, almost got it, almost got it, and boom, shakalaka! Mission complete. The loathsome spider demon that masterminded the invasion of the moon bases and caused so much death has had its ass kicked for all time. A hidden doorway opens and you enter. You've proven too tough for hell to contain, and now hell at last plays fair. For you to emerge from the door to see the green fields of Hearth, home at last. You wonder what's been happening on Earth while you were battling evil unleashed. It's good that no hell spawn could have come through that door with you. Wait a minute. Hey, it's Doom Guy's pet bunny. How cute. Wait a second. What's going on? <laughs> oh, that's not good. Oh no, not the bunny! For those who don't know, Doom Guy's pet bunny Daisy is basically his version of John Wick's dog. So you know, like, like in the sequel, things are gonna go down. Buckle up, ch Huckles, it's about to go down. So, uh, that's it. That's Brutal Doom. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning into my very first Let's Play series. I've learned a lot over the course of the five some odd videos I've made for this series. And, uh, I've got big plans for this channel moving forward. I'm gonna hopefully find an editor to make these videos more fun and entertaining. I'm gonna get a channel banner made and just hopefully try to grow the channel as much as possible so I can get monetized as quickly as possible. Um, but that's all from me. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time when I play Quake 4. Peace!